All right, so this is basically what they do here. You see how this is like a brand new construction house, new build, double decker. This is kind of the older style house that's been there for 50 or 60 years. And so that's a new one over there as well. And then this one's, that one there's a little bit older. So all this new money comes in and displaces all the old people that have been there. And this is happening here in Seattle, in the Seattle area as well, because you have all these big companies uh, with a lot of people that are well off and they don't have uh, uh, enough new housing. So, well, they don't really have any, any space, right? There's basically a lot of houses already around the city. The problem is a lot of these houses are uh, smaller and older houses, but the land is worth a lot because it's in a desirable area. So the people that have lived there for 20, 30, 40, even 50 years, some of these people, uh, basically what's happening is all their houses get uh, offers by builders to come in and buy their, buy their house because then they will knock it down and they'll build, you know, one of these bigger kind of monstrosity houses here, which these houses are easily, I think, $2 million dollars. Uh, or more. I don't know the exact price. They're probably more than that, maybe $3 million, just because of the location. One of the houses that is older, just down the street here, is selling for like $1.8 million. At least that's what they're asking. And um, I would imagine anyone that buys that is going to be tearing it down and building something modern like this. No one's going to spend $2 million to live in a, you know, old style house like that one right there. They're not going to spend that type of money. They're going to completely redo it and make it modern. And so that's happening all around here. This is in uh, Bellevue, Washington. But that's happening um, in, in a lot of areas because the the houses are so old, but there's, there's, a, there's a lot of people that want to live there. And the people that have money will come in and give the, the owner uh, a lot of money for the land because then they're going to build a house and live where they want to live. So people are getting pushed out people that have been here a long time and that's kind of just the way of the world, I guess. And so a lot of these new houses are being built, but you know, it makes you wonder. It's like all these, all these people that have these new houses, you know, typically they got like cars like this, right? Big BMW, probably like a $60,000 car, um, you know, brand new Teslas. So they're not hurting for money, right? They got the brand new house. They got brand new car. Then you got people that have lived in these older houses that are you know like this guy's got just 20 year old toyotas in the in the in the driveway and an acura it's probably worth just a couple thousand dollars so you know the new money comes in and and and, and kind of pushes out all of the all of the people that have been there and so do you guys see that where you are i mean i think in any kind of bigger city with a lot of companies that that tends to be what happens you must be making an you know, very, very good money though. If you can afford to buy the land for $2 million and then build a $3 million house on the, on the land, because I'm telling you, some of these houses are 1.5, you know, 1.7 million that need a complete rebuild in order to look like this. They don't look like that, right? They, they would buy the house, they would knock it down and then they would build a, you know, uh, like I said, a two or $3 million house on that, uh, on that land. So it really is just a small section of people. You know, it's, 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 it goes back to what I said about the haves and the have nots. You got probably 1% of people that can afford this type of stuff. You know, this is already an incredibly expensive area to live just for a modest house or an apartment. But you're going to build one of these houses on here. And this isn't anything crazy. Well, actually, it kind of is crazy. It's kind of, a, it's kind of like a compound. But um, if you move this to Texas or somewhere in the middle of nowhere, it would be nowhere near as much. It's just because of where the house is that it's, that it's worth so much. And it's a nice house. You know, Don't get me wrong. It's a brand new big house. But the land is really what makes the house worth more because it's in a desirable location where a lot of people want to live. So everyone's getting pushed out. All these houses, you know, like I said, when I rented a house out here, 
we just rented a complete piece of crap house for like four years. And um, every single house beside us was com was knocked down. All the people sold their houses beside us because th those were owner-operated homes. They weren't being rented out. And um, construction zone for four years continuous of houses being demolished, construction workers, framing, you know, building the house out every single day and every single afternoon for four years. And the money's there, right? So people that work at Microsoft or Amazon or... I don't know. I think Google, there's a lot of companies here that, um, they have offices here, or this is literally where the headquarters is Starbucks, Amazon, um, you know, Expedia. There's a lot of companies that are based in Seattle. And so all these people that make good money, they want to live relatively close to where they work. And so that's, what's been happening here is everyone that owned a house here got pushed out they knock the house over. They build on these monstrosities. And then kind of the whole feel of the of the area changes because you have a completely different vibe than what you had just a few years ago. So are you guys seeing this? Let me know your thoughts on it. It's kind of just the way of the world. Not much you can do. You know, money talks. People probably wouldn't sell their house, but if they get a ridiculous offer, they're going to take it and they're going to go do whatever they want to do with it. Retire, you know, move somewhere cheaper and enjoy their life. So I don't blame them. I'd probably do the same thing if I was in their shoes. You let me know what you think. Driving the Saturn. Subscribe for more if you want. See you in the next one. Take care.